nice to meet you everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through every wallet and anchor's favorite journey, the KYC journey that uh, Vibrant has gone through using different steps. So first, let me introduce myself. My name is Ji Sun. I'm a front-end developer on the, Vibrant, on the Vibrant team, and I've been working on the Vibrant mobile wallet for about the last year and a half, and previously worked on various web products at SDF. I have first-hand experience with cross-border remittance when I moved to the United States from South Korea when I was 14, so I'm very passionate about SDF's mission. And another interest of mine related to fintech is South Korea's fintech activities. So if you want to talk about APAC fintech activities, um, let's chat. My goal for this talk is for anyone who has little to zero knowledge of Stellar to understand what the advantages and this other advantages are for the steps that involve KYC. So first we will review key terminology to go over what Vibrant, SEPs, KYC and anchors are. Then we will explore different step options for your wallet's KYC. Then we will end this talk with summary of advantages and disadvantages of the steps that we talk about. So key terminology. What is Vibrant? Vibrant is a wallet app to help Argentinians escape currency devaluation, no matter how much they know about Stellar. What are anchors? Stellar anchors are the on and off ramps of the Stellar network. So for Vibrant, StableX is the anchor that accepts deposits of Argentine pesos currency and send equivalent digital tokens, ARST, to the users on the Stellar network. Anchors that take deposits need to verify its customer's identity, and this is where KYC comes in. Users are required to go through KYC first before making any deposits and withdrawal on Vibrant. KYC stands for Know Your Customer. It helps prevent identity theft, money laundering, financial fraud, and other financial crimes. Vibrant's current KYC flow is to submit users' KYC information to StableX, the anchor, and the anchor let us know whether the user's KYC is approved, needs more info, or rejected. So this isn't like set in stone. Um, there are apps out there that allow deposit and withdrawal first, and then KYC, but Vibrant does KYC first. If every anchor implemented their own KYC API, it would be chaos. If one anchor requires a different way of acquiring the KYC and others don't, it would be a lot of work for both anchors and wallets to implement. So Stellar encourages anchors and wallets to follow public standards called SEPs, Stellar Ecosystem Protocol. So let's explore the SEPs that fit your wallet's KYC needs. One of Vibrant's goals has been to increase convergent rate within the KYC flow. So we've been experimenting with uh, multiple steps to verify KYC. And we started with uh, step 24, hosted deposit and withdrawal. Then we experimented with step 12 and step six around like April this year. And right now we are experimenting with our existing step 12 and step six with a KYC SDK platform called Jumio. So step 12, step six are an old way of doing what step 24 does. And this talk is focused on KYC. So I just wanna clarify that the steps we'll be talking about today by definition has deposit and withdrawal feature as the main definition. So in step 24, KYC is embedded within deposit and withdrawal interactive form. So even though the name doesn't mention KYC, it's included in step 24. And for step 12, step six, I'll be mentioning both step 12 and step six instead of just step 12, which defines the KYC API, because I think coupling them together is a better data comparison to step 24. So what we started with um, is step 24, hosted deposit and withdrawal. Step 24 allows the wallet to embed the anchor's whole KYC experience in the wallet. So users are on Vibrant app, but their KYC experience is handled by our anchor StableX. And Vibrant, the wallet side, just embeds StableX's uh, KYC experience. So step 24 is pretty amazing. Uh, this is very convenient for wallets. By using step 24, wallets don't have to spend time or resources on implementing their own KYC user interface because anchors build all the KYC UI for you. 
So for the so for those of you who have seen or like used iframe before, it's exactly like that. So it's just embedding someone else's um, web page into your website. In this case, like application. And this feature of Step24 makes wallet integration with multiple anchors much easier for wallets. So I'm showing Lobster Wallet as an example. So you can see that it supports many anchors through Step24 by just embedding the anchors web view. And I repeat again, uh, by just embedding the anchors UI uh, through Step24, wallets don't have to spend time on building UI for the anchors. And for this uh, slide, I would like to point out the advantages of Step24 for anchors, not wallets, but for anchors, is that it allows each anchor to customize the actual needs of the specific anchor. So with Lobster Wallet's example, you can see each screen is customized differently to reflect their needs and branding. It's also quicker for anchors to develop rather than constantly modifying the standard to accommodate for each and every end case. This means that through Step24, we can easily access to the anchors that use Step24 on Stellar Network. This is the map of our current active anchors. I did not include the 190 countries that MoneyGram supports. I thought about adding that, but it was like a lot of work. So I decided to skip it. Um, anyway, uh, if all anchors on Stellar Network support Step24, it will make it very easy for wallets to integrate with them like we saw with Lobster example. So Step24 sounds amazing. Why did Vibrant decide to go with other steps? So here are some challenges we face with Step24 for our use case. As I mentioned in the beginning, Vibrant helps Argentinians escape currency devaluation, no matter how much they know about Stellar. So making Vibrant's user experience friendly and clear is our number one goal. However, doing KYC on a separate web view caused confusion among some users. One of the common feedbacks we got from user was, we downloaded Vibrant, but when I tried to verify my ID for the KYC, it took me to a different website with a different brand name. I wanted to share my identity information with Vibrant, but who is StableX? Another disadvantage for our use case was that it was hard to predict user engagement. We had no idea where during the KYC process the user decided to discontinue. So for example, let's say we had 10 users entering the Vibrant's Verify Your KYC screen. Once they click Verify button and led to the Anchor's KYC web view, there was no way for Vibrant, the wallet side, to know what was going on with our users during the Anchor's KYC process. Since it wasn't our KYC process, we had no control over it. So what we saw was much less number of users who actually have gone through the KYC compared to the number we saw during the Vibrant's initial um, KYC screen. So these numbers on the slide are fake, obviously, but the real number differences were pretty significant. So we really needed to know like what happened and which screen or the KYC step discouraged users to proceed with the Anchor's KYC process. We needed to know this to make an improvement, but with Step24, it was hard to make that improvement. The last issue we faced was not related to Step24. Um, we had this particular bug that restarted the app when opening a native camera functionality from the web view on certain devices, which prevented users from completing the Anchor's KYC process. Uh, it created a very frustrating experience for them. It was not ideal. And like I mentioned, it's not related to Step24. It could be a bug with um, certain libraries that we use. But along with the disadvantages that I mentioned previously, and since we wanted Vibrant to be functional on all the platforms, regardless of device models, we decided to explore other step options. So our second option is step 12 and step six. And step 12 defines a KYC API for the anchors, wallets build custom KYC UI, then use the anchors public KYC API via step 12. Similar to Step 12, uh, Step 6 defines deposit and withdrawal API, and wallets build custom UI and then use the anchors API via Step 6. So to use Step 12 and Step 6, uh, Vibrant's head of designer designed a custom user interface and developers implemented that design into the app. So let's talk about why um, Vibrant didn't start with Step 12 and Step 6. Like what are the disadvantages? 
Big one is um, more app development time. Like I mentioned previously, with Step 12 and Step 6, Vibrant has to implement its own custom KYC user interface. And depending on the anchor's country's KYC requirement, this can be as long as designing and developing more than five screens. Another reason we didn't start with step 12 and step six is that unlike what we saw with Lobster Wallet step 24 implementation previously, if Vibrant wants to expand to other countries with step 12 and step six, it may require a new custom user interface because each anchor's country has different KYC needs. Some countries require proof of income, some require certificate of residence or birth certificate, et cetera. So it's like much harder for wallets to carry it with sub 12 and sub six once it wants to expand to other countries. But the advantage of sub 12 and sub six outweighed the disadvantage of for Vibrant's use case. So now we can give more context to our users. The KYC user interface is under our control so we can clarify our relationship with StableX. We also now have more control over the UI, so users like, don't need to leave the app to the KYC. And we can prevent restarts by embedding the camera directly into the app, which also means Vibrant, the wallet side, now has the precise control over the KYC flow. And this allowed us to add analytics in each screen to find out where the dropouts were. For Vibrant, the biggest drop-off happened right before the camera screens. And this gives us a lot more flexibility for the wallet. And like I just said, our analytics showed us that drop-offs happen right before the camera steps. And pictures are required um, for most of KYC process. And they usually um, require to be like taken during the KYC process to prove liveness. So we cannot remove these steps. Um, but what we did instead was to experiment with using an SDK. So right now we are um, currently experimenting with Jumio SDK, uh, which allows us to reduce the number of KYC steps by having users to just take a photo of their ID and have their personal information extracted and filled out by the SDK. And we are still monitoring its result. Because we focus on Argentina, we don't need to support multiple anchors at the moment. So step 12 and step six are better suited for our needs. And our KYC process has gotten a lot better and quicker. So average response time for Vibrant's user KYC to be verified is 10 seconds. And 75% of Vibrant users KYC are approved within two minutes. And this is a big improvement. So Big thanks to the Vibrant team and StableX for working very hard to make this happen. Uh, so let's review. Uh, okay. So this is a chart of SEP 12, SEP 6, and SEP 24. If you'd like to know more about these SEPs, I highly recommend watching Tomer's uh, A Brief History of Anchor Interoperability from Marianne 2020. Uh, this chart and Lobster Wallet's anchor screenshots are from that talk. And that talk gives you both history and more details of the SEPs. So I highly recommend watching that talk if you find this talk interesting. But for this talk, I would like my audience to focus um, the KYC parts wrapped in purple dots in this chart. So this is where the KYC differences are between SEP 12 and SEP 6 and SEP 24. Uh, SEP 12, SEP 6, it's just like a KYC like API that wallet size submits and sub 24, we get the KYC URL from the anchor and we show that what they gave us within a web view. So step 24, hosted deposit and withdrawal. It's great if you want less UI work and less work to implement additional anchors when you want to expand to other countries through other anchors for your wallets. But step 24 might not be the best choice for you because it gives you less control for wallets. Step 12, step six is great if you want more control over the experience and just like more control in general for wallets. But step 12, step six might not be the best choice for you because it requires more work and resources to implement and it will take more work to implement additional anchors for wallets. So this is the summary of advantages and this advantages of step 24 and step 12, step six for Vibrance use case. Ideally, we can have both types of anchor integration and StableX does support both. Vibrant's KYC process in the future might change since steps are always evolving. So we will make sure to keep experimenting with it for our users. 
And so I just wanna say thanks to the Vibrant team and StableX for working very hard on improving the Vibrant's KYC flow. And thank you for still listening to my talk. And if you have any question, please leave a comment. A comment, where's a comment, I don't know. And I'll get back to you. And finally, Vibrant is available on both App Store and Google Play.